Theme song, theme song. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome back to A Thousand Eyes and One and our book club, Wine on an Empty Stomach. Today, we're talking in Nancy Boys with our friend Anastasia, who you should remember from The Ocean at the End of the Lake. To find previous episodes, go to thousandeyespodcast.com. You can also find us on YouTube, A Thousand Eyes of One Podcast. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, we're on Twitter as Thousand Eyes One, Facebook and Instagram, A Thousand Eyes and One. If you're interested in our speculative fiction book club, that is Wine on an Empty Stomach on Instagram. Yes. All things Neil, all day. <laughs> Always. <laughs> What's funny is that I just finished rereading that. Uh, Anansi Boys? Ocean at the End of the Lane. Oh, oh it's so yeah, good. Yeah, Anansi Boys, of course, I had to touch a little bit because I knew we're going to yeah. be talking about it. But yeah. yeah. It's um I I sometimes I text Tanya about things that I've read that I that I assume are have already been made for the screen and they're not it's just my wishful thinking and Ocean at the end of the lane is one of them like I would yeah. love to see that as a limited <laughs> series but you know they're they're slowly making their way through all of his books so I'm quite confident that mm-hmm. we will get there eventually we're just not quite there yet that we'll would be a there. really good series. Really yeah, Anansi I'm Boys is supposed it. to be in development, but we—I've never heard anything about it after it was first announced. Mm. It may take some time. Yeah, and I have to say that too. Um, usually, when we do hear his, because look at how long it took us to to get what we did get so far. I feel yeah. like there's usually a lot of time because he wants to be heavily involved, exactly. and he wants to preserve, you know, the level of work to a certain level. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, it gives me hope. Yeah, he's not abandoning it to D and D type people. Ugh. Yeah. I hope I hope Vince. every writer has learned from that because, Whew. yeah, moment yeah. of silence. Just yeah. Although I will say that I did watch um, as t- to soothe my anxiety a couple weeks ago. I watched um, Battles from Game of Thrones. I watched Battle of the mm-hmm. Bastards. I watched Hard Home. And I watched uh, The Wagon, uh, the Spoils of War and Blackwater. Mm-hmm. It was next up. And it made me so happy. So, yeah. yeah they were de- definitely good at adapting what was already written. I won't take that mm-hmm. from them. No. But when it came to actually writing, garbage. Just yeah, they garbage. should have left the writing to the writers. They yeah. should have let a lot left. Left a lot to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, we're here. Anywho. I'm Nikki. Hi. We're it's wine on empty stomach. We're back. Um, Guinness, because you know, Guinness is good. I'm for drinking you. red wine because wine on an empty stomach, but my stomach's not empty. Mine isn't. I am being very responsible with water. Wow. I'm no fun this time around, just water. It's fine. Good, you're our good role model. <laughs> <laughs> So question for both of you. Did you grow up with a Nancy stories? Nope. Yes. Okay. I did too. I did. It was um, huge for me. I don't know if it was just my family. I mean, ironically, I was talking about like also Aesop's fables this morning. Mm -hmm. It was kind of that, you know, we always refer to those kinds of stories. We did have the fairy tales, like, you know, Beauty and the Beast, like the Disney stuff, but that was really our bread and butter. You know, they were like, no, babes, you're going to learn the lesson a little faster than you watch <laughs> Cinderella 10 times. You're going to, you're going to get it the second time and we're going to move, we're going to move on. So I didn't get any of the Disney stuff. I didn't watch, there were a few that I saw, like I saw Aladdin after it came to VHS. I never saw any of the Disney princess movies in the theater. Um, I didn't watch The Little Mermaid until maybe seven years ago, whenever it was that Disney Plus came out. Um, But I did grow up on Aesop's fables and Anansi stories and a lot of Bible stories. I had to do, I had to, I had, and I I wish I still had the, I have one Anansi book here that I read to my son sometimes, but all of the Anansi books that I had when I was little, I have no idea where they are. And I wish I could find them because they're from like the eighties. Yeah, no, I, I I had zero experience with it. Um, 
because uh, so we used to get the Disney movies because people my mom would buy them because we didn't have like we lived in Germany and it was the 80s and so there was like one channel um mm. and so we would like watch VHS tapes like incessantly just over and over and over and over again so we had lots of Disney uh but because I was a reader to like Aesop's Tales Cri because I was in Germany Grimm's Fairy Tales Hans Christian yeah. Andersen yeah. yeah um and then lots of mythology uh, so I had no exposure to Anansi. I'm trying to think. I don't think that I've ever heard like any St. Lucian person that I know mention them. Like not in my family. God, maybe others do. Um, and that'll be an interesting. I'm going to ask my grandma. But yeah, so it was my first exposure, I think, was when I read American. Like I'd heard, you know, tell of like this God. But uh, my first real exposure was when I read American Gods. Because I read, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I read that before I read this. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think in the Caribbean, it's uh, it's Br'er and Nancy, like that's yeah. how they um, refer to it. Mm -hmm. And like, it's very interesting because I never really thought about whether or not it was like a Caribbean wide thing. And now I'm, I'm thinking, cause I'm wondering if that's coming from like the British colonial, you mm. know, preservation know. of things. I, I definitely learned about it in the Caribbean as well. Mm. Um, I, Mainly because, so whenever we visited Jamaica, if school was in session, we had to go to school. We just That's just the way it was. I was never like officially enrolled in any school. But you were going. But yeah, even if it was summer vacation, if it wasn't summer vacation for them yet, we had to go to school. And so that's where I learned, that's where I got the books and mm -hmm. heard a lot of the stories was from those teachers. And sometimes my great grandma would tell stories. Um you know how old people like to tell yeah. stories so she would tell us there was one in particular about him at like a funeral stealing all of the peas and hiding them in his hat and then it burns all the hair off his head and that's why Nancy's <laughs> bald <laughs> <laughs> like that's the that's like the condensed version so like yeah. the Nancy stories it's like a ton of those which they do yeah. have a few in uh Nancy boys that I really I really appreciated that he threw in mm -hmm. a few of his tricks so that you can get an idea of who Nancy yeah. is and you know the tricks he pulled on fat charlie the fact that he died at karaoke pulling down some woman's shirt you know like yeah. i i really i thought that that uh neil gaiman captured the spirit of a nancy really well in this mm -hmm. i did too because mm -hmm. i was nervous coming from the background of knowing the stories on whether or not because the the book that i had just finished reading before this for him was neverwhere so that's my next book yeah that's the so first that, one i read from him me too and i fell in love so it was such a a very serious book that kind of at the end stunned me a little bit because i was like wait you kind of have that feeling of like 100 years of solitude where when everything catches up to you you're like oh damn <sighs> <laughs> like oh damn like I can't believe I that's where we ended up so when he had announced this one I was like oh buddy I love you but I don't know if you'll be able to capture that playfulness but also mm -hmm. that you know that lilt into seriousness when it's time to learn that lesson and figure out like what's actually going on but I think he did a really really good job of capturing it and I was like okay Neil Okay. Yeah, I was also worried that it would be like a Stephen King kind of situation. Oh, yeah. You know, he's notoriously bad at writing black people. Like yeah. it's it's a thing. And I love Stephen King, but like just no, don't touch yeah, yeah those people. I am um, <laughs> what's interesting is I read um I was like I was watching Neil Gaiman's Masterclass a series mm -hmm. and um he was talking about Anansi boys and American gods and just like feeling like, Oh my God, how am I going to write like America? Like I'm not from there. I I moved here and I like it now, but he like treats America just like as a mythical place period, mm -hmm. which makes it super fun. And it's, uh, it's cool that you mentioned Gabriel Garcia Marquez because mm -hmm. like Neil Gaiman also like really well, like dips into magical realism, yes. you know, like, oh, for a second, like I'm here doing this, but now the spider is going to go call my brother for me. You know, right. like, I thought I was very much grounded until this fantastical thing happens and he does it so well. Ugh. Yeah. And so pick up on that. I think he switches in between it a lot. I think for me, 
reading 100 Years of Solitude, I mean, I was younger also at the time, but it was a lot, you know? It's like, hey, I really have to focus my mind on your literary masterpiece. Like, you're a genius (laughs) and I know it. And I have to take my time getting there. Mm -hmm. But I feel with this, there is no real barrier to it. And the magical realism becomes so normal after, I don't know, man showed up and was doing meetings at his job as him. It's like, yeah. what are you doing? Like you're <laughs> you're mixing something so ridiculous with something so mundane. Like, why mm-hmm. are you pretending to be him and going to work? Why would you go to work? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But why not pretend yeah. to be him and call him sick? Yeah. yeah. Like go for a night on the town. It's like, no, I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna do all of the normal things. Ha ha, little do they know. Yeah, and you and get I, to have this inside joke with him as well, which I really mm-hmm. did appreciate. That's really, I think, I think that was super funny because it, uh, when he first shows up, he, uh, there he's Neil's like, it seemed like he'd never really been in a kitchen before, you know, <laughs> he'd never been in an office before. Um, all these things that are like first times for him, so he's just having a grand old time, like you know, like cosplaying as his brother, <laughs> cosplaying I, as a human. The first moment for me, rather. well, I guess it's the first moment that we see Spider do magic because in Charlie's dream, Spider's doing magic. He doesn't realize he's actually seeing Spider. He thinks yeah. it's a dream. So we, the reader, think it's a dream too, with, where he has everyone at the party walk on water. Mm-hmm. And then when he shows up to Charlie's apartment and uh, Charlie has the picture yeah. And, he just, and he doesn't believe that his father has died. So he steps into the picture. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I love Charlie's that. Like, just there like, to that. He's like, I don't, he didn't, re- he couldn't remember if the picture got small, a bigger or a spider got smaller. smaller but all yeah. the same, he went into the picture. Yeah. I listened to the audio book most recently and it's read by Lenny Henry, who I'm not, I'm Googling him now. I'm not particularly mm-hmm. familiar with him, but I did think he did a great job. Um, yeah yeah switching I wonder if he's he's English I'm looking him up let's see to see if he's English Jamaican or something yeah because yeah, yeah. he did a really good job switching accents I was and... nervous about that <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll be honest that's why I didn't I didn't even bother I saw it was a Neil and I was like not that I would want him to read this but I'm like yeah I'm good. So that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. yeah. I think the oh, cool thing yes, about Neil he's Jamaican. Gaiman, he's Jamaican. Okay. Because yeah. when I was like bracing myself for that first accent change, and then I heard, I was like, oh. He does a and great, then as he, he goes it throughout the rest job. of the cat, the, the rest of the characters, I was like, no, this is somebody he, like he knows. He is. Oh, I should have known it. he was Jamaican. His name was his name is Lenworth George Henry. Oh, Lenworth, well, yeah. That that's a Jamaican gentleman. He is mm-hmm. a Jamaican gentleman. Mm-hmm. Um, because so before this i was listening to how to love a jamaican i don't know if this is a collection of short stories yes it's awful to listen to oh is it required reading for your marriage (laughs) not the (laughs) audiobook (laughs) definitely not the audiobook if the accents are just really bad to the point where it feels like people didn't even google pronunciations you know Mm. That's terrible. And I, I much rather they just not mm-hmm, until yeah. they do find people. I, I do get, you know, it's an accessibility issue. You want mm. all formats to be released at the same time. But baby, please, no, no. Yeah, like, because they're out there. There's Caribbean yeah. voice actors out there. And like, you know, I'll take a St. Lucian doing a Jamaican accent if I'm it comes fine, down yeah. to that. Give yeah. me a diaspora yeah. accent at least. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, like there's a show... Um, Rasta Mouse that my kids watch. <laughs> and it's, it's a goofy show. It's actually kind of cool because it's like Rasta Mouse is very much like uh anti-jail. You know, he he solves crimes and it's like every he looks for like restitution and then like helps the criminal make their life better so that they won't okay. commit crimes anymore. Yeah, it's really great. But none of the voice actors are Jamaican. I think all of them are like Ghanaian English, mm. but they do a better Jamaican accent than I've ever heard from, yeah. you know, most Americans, you know, a lot I, of English. Luke Cage season two. I rest Oof. my case. Oh, 
please. <laughs> we were repressing. We were repressing. Oh, uh, I I we're gonna bring up it. if we're gonna bring up GOT fails, we gotta bring up. <laughs> yeah. I think when whenever I hear American like American shows or productions do Jamaican accents, it's almost like they didn't even take the time just to put into YouTube Jamaican, just any Jamaican video. Right. And you would see that that because it sounds yeah. nothing like, but it also sounds nothing like anything else. It's not like, oh, you were trying for Jamaica and, and then you ended up in like a Trini Bayesian or it's kind of Guyanese. No, it's, no. it's the most ridiculous. Sounding like, I, would, I would forgive them if they start trying to go for Jamaican and ended up Irish. Like that would no, be but the that's only the thing, thing I'd be like, okay. I hate it when they sound Irish <laughs> because like I, people always say that Jamaicans sound Irish and they don't sound Irish to me like at all. I can see why. Yeah. I, they just don't sound Irish to me. And so it always sounds like they found like the one Nigerian in Ireland and then just use that accent. You know what I mean? Like that's how it always sounds to me. <laughs> hey, AK. Hey, AK. Um, um, say so about. yes, I get. Oh, you I, know what? It's like, um, I was going to say, it's really annoying to me too, because uh, Anastasia, she's, I'm like learning guitar and like, I was like, oh yeah, Bob Marley songs at any time. Like it's like a white guy with a guitar and I'm like, you better not fucking do it. And if like, if they, if he starts to do the accent, I don't care how good his other tutorials are. He gets banned <laughs> for me since, you know, after oh, that. Cause I just, I'm like, why you can sing no woman will cry, no cry without faking the accent. Yeah. It's so bad. Well, Lenny Henry does an excellent job with Anansi's accents, with the old ladies, with Fat Charlie, like switching between even even his American accent. Sometimes he did slip up and get a little bit English mm. when he was doing Spider's American mm -hmm. accent. Like mm -hmm. he had moments. Yeah. But overall, uh, he did a really great job switching accents, I thought. And so and it was a really good listen to me at nighttime. Spy <laughs> his Graham Coates accent I'm was like, fantastic. I don't, I don't know. You you must really just need, I don't know, a good 10 years of chaos in your life if you're considering having Spider <laughs> whisper sweet No, I don't say I want him to stay. I just want him to like read me stories before I go to sleep. But we, we um, see that he, he we that. see that he will stay. Yeah, he will stay. <laughs> If he likes he your will. life enough and finds it interesting enough, he'll stay. Yeah. And Charlie so didn't even have an interesting life. He goes to work. He's like, that's fine. I'll go to Phoenix. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say about that. Well, I'll just say last thing about audiobook is that I just, I recommend it. Yeah, it's, it was really, really good. good. I was audiobook. listening to it before we started. Um, Except there's this weird music uh, Coates. in between sections. This weird, like... Really? Oh, African jumping. That I oh, like, I don't have that. Yeah, the version I have, the first time I listened to it, I uh, it didn't have that when I checked it out at the library. But the mm -hmm. version that I bought has like this weird music that I'm, that uh, like throws me off, which the I only regret. Thing that, that throws me off about the version that I have, it goes disc three. <laughs> And then it's yeah the ones it. the ones at the library it's like t disc mm -hmm. one yeah but the <laughs> the updated version has like music in between those yeah those breaks yeah. and it's I don't know it's I gotta, not good music I gotta say as far as villains go I did enjoy Graham Coates um it, like I his cliches annoyed me so much he reminded me of one of my sister's ex boyfriends that I used to call Captain Catchphrase because there's nothing original that used to come out of his mouth. <laughs> Um, and it felt very much like that. I don't care. Come for me. Um, it's true. <laughs> uh, but he was just like, just to watch him kind of um, become the villain that he always like secretly wanted to be. Like, he's like, oh, he's killing this. He wondered if he'd get a chance to do it again, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. what a terrible and I like that human. They don't, I like that they don't sugarcoat it too. Like, they really do give us that like back end view. I'm like, hey, yeah, no, the terrible is escalating and mm -hmm. he's not going to feel bad about it. However you feel about his impact on the story, he's simply not going to feel that way. So like he has no redeeming qualities. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, he's mm -mm. just a bad person, like all around. Um, I love spiders, crazy ass a lot. I will say we, of course, have like the whole problematic Rosie's kind of a victim that you know of spider, her mother of spider <laughs> she's sleeping mother. with him after saving herself for marriage let's talk about that that he's charlie let's like, talk about that <laughs> let's 
let's talk about this <laughs> coin jar and just like so i was gonna say it's not as if we don't ever do tmi here once upon a time i was abstinent for a year uh, because i wanted to focus on just like school and just you know not boy stuff or girl stuff or whatever right so i was absent for a year and then i started oh, i took a year. i started dating um this guy who made it he didn't make it hard but it was hard for me um and so when rosie like that first kiss i was just like uh oh this is trouble mm. Yeah. Like she wouldn't even let uh let Fat Charlie come into the bathroom until it was like to get rid of the spider, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, come on, man, give him the buns. Like never a ever spider. Oh, I was that, that devastating that... moment where where Fat Charlie sees him outside, like the yeah. and, she, and and she thinks she hears an animal howling outside. Yeah, that was really sad. And I'm just like, I hate that I had to go there. I do. I was it Wonder is. Woman. Nineteen eighty four, tricking the yeah. tricking the person. Into, oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't necessarily like that's not a, a trope I like in the body doubling because I'm just like it's it's got to be like a skeezy like feeling, and mm -hmm. then you know you're you're not human, you're not processing it the same way as I am, and. You're not giving thought to it, mm -hmm. but like, yeah, you're absolutely just ruining this, not this thing just for your brother, but for this person that you don't know, and you're just going to affect their life and you're going to move on. Like, it's just a Tuesday for you. It could have been anybody, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. just the Tuesday. girl itself doesn't <laughs> even matter. It could have been yeah. anyone. Right. I mean, yeah, I, Spider even says like he has a woman until he's tired of her and just moves yeah. on to another one. Except he didn't. Right. And, and then we, you know, Rosie, after she finds out that that's not Charlie, she realizes she never loved Charlie and is in love with Spider. And then, yeah. I'm, then my heart broke for Charlie because I was like, damn. My heart yeah, didn't I break was there for like, Charlie. Girl, what you doing? <laughs> I felt like, felt like they were as well. I feel yeah. Like I felt that they were supposed so casual about their romance that I was just like, not at all happy, not at all sad to see it fall apart. Yeah. I was like, um, um, okay, y'all should have just been friends. Y'all went yeah. through the motions because that was the next stage of life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I was going to say, if it definitely felt like a relationship where it's like, okay, we've been dating for a year. Now it's time to be engaged. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, she says over and over, like, she largely was engaged to Charlie because it annoyed her mother. Yeah. You know, which is not a good reason to be engaged. Not at a all. good reason to be engaged. Not at all. And I um, think, um, like, I was, re <laughs> I was, it was like a study or something or that I read and it was like, or article or whatever about a study where they were saying that couples that live together for like really, a really long time when they'd get married and then very quickly divorce, you know, and it was asking like, well, why is that? And I always thought it's because those specific couples probably got married because it felt like the next step. Mm -hmm. And you then know? nothing changed when they got yeah. married. Yeah. And then they realized, why did I do this? Like the next just... step was actually breaking up. <laughs> yeah. I was or at a dinner... living happily unmarried, you know? I was at a dinner yeah. uh, Friday night talking about how much I support divorce and everyone thought I was crazy. But like no, I've, definitely. I've talked about it a bunch. Don't and worry. and I'm, I'm married. You know, I'm married. I love my husband. We're happy. But like I fully support people getting divorced and I fully support people breaking up no matter how long they've been together. Yeah. And in the case of Charlie... And uh, Rosie, Rosie, they definitely they, needed to break up. I just hated the way it happened. You know, yeah, yeah. General principle, it was messy. It was messy. Very messy. Spider didn't have to do that, but in general, yeah, they both needed to go their own ways. Mm -hmm. Like they said, they could have just been friends, and it would have been cool, mm -hmm. right? They could have. And Spider falling in out. love with her, of course, was crazy because when is Hello. Spider in love? Hey, fandom. But of when course, he fell in love. love. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. The god falls in love with the mortal. Love, love. You know who Spider reminds me of? Like when <laughs> Fat Charlie opens the door to his storage closet and then suddenly it's all pimped out. He reminds me <laughs> of Semi from Coming to America. Yeah. And he gets all the money. He's just in the room. <laughs> he yeah. Like, he said to like jazz the place up a little bit. <laughs> what did you say, Anastasia? Oh, oh I can't hear you. Accidental mute. I said no. that was such a good show. Uh, oh. 
Well, at least I could vouch for the first season. <laughs> really <laughs> great. <sighs> yeah. Um, do you want to talk about Rosie's mother? I love all of Fat Charlie's uh, thoughts and like comments about Rosie's mother. I thought they were excellent where he was like <laughs> talking about how she doesn't eat and she just leaves dried husks <laughs> behind her. <laughs> like people, He was funny. Like, I was like, it was everything he said about her was so funny. Yeah. So I, funny. I particularly he, like how horrified he was when she, when he realized she was about to smile. Yes. You know who she reminded with who she like in my head, I keep picturing her as, as a black Isma from uh, the Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I was just like, oh my God, she's got all the same characteristics. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, funny. Yeah, no, she 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 was a character. Which I appreciated because I know women like that. I have yeah. an aunt kind of like that. She told me at my bridal shower, like it's not too late to not get married. <laughs> I mean, you know what? I support love. But I also understand it because she's like, baby, you don't have to be here unless you really want to be. She's like, it's not too you late. Really want to be. Yeah. I'm like, ma'am, it's in two weeks. <laughs> she bought me like she bought me a mini wedding cake and put it on the table and then was like, you don't have to do this. She's like, you can just have babies. You don't have to marry him if you don't want to. And I was like, no, 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 it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I love that. I feel like people should be more honest about that kind yeah. of shit. Yeah. 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 Um, What's detect our cute little detective's name? Daisy. 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 I like Daisy. I like, I like Daisy, Daisy too. Start. Yeah. She was a little bit crazy. <laughs> crazy Daisy. Crazy um, Daisy. Gotta be. Uh, I liked it though. Because she you was... know, I feel like a normal person at somebody's house for the first time wouldn't just be walking around in their underwear and just you know introducing themselves to the old woman at the door like oh hey what's up you know in their drawers just casual she had the right amount of ridiculous for the situation and it worked <laughs> i may or may not have ever done that um <laughs> <laughs> next 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 question your honor um yeah she was she reminded me of like a smart version of the the detective constable <laughs> from uh good omens the second season i forgot her, I forgot oh her yeah name. yeah yeah i guess the, she was I smart watch and the ambitious. angel mm -hmm. the angel who was pretending to be a detective constable and just kind of <laughs> didn't know how to pretend to be human or how to pretend to be a police yeah so she was adorable um yeah, Daisy Daisy is crazy. Daisy I liked. Um, like when they had that kiss, I was like, oh no, it's over. It's over. She's coming <laughs> back. She's coming back. Um, so that I felt I felt like I was prepared for Fat Charlie. I think it's because their relationship was just so lukewarm to me. It felt like more like they were roommates than mm -hmm. than anything else. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, um after she takes it to the shower, he's like he she kissed him ling a lingering kiss on the cheek i'm like what the fuck is a lingering kiss on the cheek <laughs> don't stay on my cheek that long like no yeah, just holding it there for like 35 like forehead kiss <laughs> maybe but on the cheek don't give me a lingering kiss what is that yeah it was very Ooh, i had to fight all my impulses to say what else i wanted to <laughs> right after that let those intrusive thoughts win uh, we're fighting today <laughs> <laughs> I really loved, um, I loved the old ladies in Florida, mm -hmm. the Dunwoody. witches, they were basically yes. witches. I love it. And, that. um, I really loved how they weren't witchy at all. Mm -hmm. Like, like for instance, they needed black candles and she got like penguin candles yeah. because it was the closest she could get to black candles mm -hmm. and they needed, I forgot what herb and. Uh, Mrs. Higgler got like an Italian blend because yeah. she's just she's like, like, well, whenever I need that kind there. of herb, I just get like the blend. Mm -hmm. You know, I I I thought that was really fun, and that's kind of how I imagine like old lady witches. That's like, I mean, not that my family's old lady witches, but it's like it's stuff like like we they talk about stuff like that. We're like, oh well, this is like you know, you're 
we're living in the real world. But when you come in, like walking backwards because this and this and that, or light this type yeah. of candle or take a bath in this type of soap, you know, it's just casual. It's just part of, it's part of the fabric of the culture. And you mm-hmm. don't even think twice about it. You're just like, oh, okay. I'll just bathe in coffee and coconut water. Cause that's what they said. No, there's definitely things that like, to me, I'm like, okay, it's whatever. But like, you know, like I don't, I don't have my own personal OBMN. My mom did for a while. Hopefully mm. she never watches this and tell her business, but she had an OBMN for a while. She talked to, but like there were things like when, um, like I had my children christened, even though I don't go to church, mm-hmm. I had both of them christened anyway. Um, and before they were christened, they both had to wear a red string to ward off mm-hmm. evil, even though it, like I just had to do it. And I remember when um, my husband's grandma passed away and my son came with us to the funeral, which, you know, Jamaicans don't really bring babies to funerals. Yeah. And I had a red string tied at his ankle so that I could hide it in his sock so that nobody would ask me why. But like I felt compelled to do it. Yeah. Like I had to do it. Like there was no way I was bringing him into a cemetery without that red string. Okay. And it's like I'm well educated. I'm well read. But like. Mm-hmm. Some things you just it wasn't like going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> my grandma yeah. did it. My mama did it. And I'm going to do it. That's exactly. just yeah. I don't know if we yeah. have something like that, but it's just like those little things that you care because, you know, you just feel protected. Even if it's just for, to make me feel protected, then exactly. I'm going to do it. When you when you said OBMN, it, uh, the Sparrow song came into my head and now it's stuck. <laughs> Sing it. Zelda, oh, you making wedding plans. <laughs> uh, I won't go. We'll keep that. Look it up. It's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, like the so yeah, there were a lot of like cultural things that when you dig deep derives from the religions that our ancestors brought to the islands. And the ones they were forced to to abandon yeah mm-hmm. and a lot and of it gets kind into, of blended yeah. with christianity yeah. at least i know in my family a lot of it gets blended with christianity and they call themselves like these hardcore christians but then there are things that they do you know salt in all your window every opening to the yep. house salt, yes exactly <laughs> put salt in the doorway like when i moved into my apartment my mom was like make sure you put salt in the doorway um when i was getting married <laughs> with, sorry but i was gonna feel like i guess you haven't done that because Yes, she's the place. My apartment is haunted. Comes. We talk oh, about this. No. Like, oh, I'm not even talking street. about her. I'm talking about oh. the vampire who comes in and out. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, she's not a vampire. She's a different thing. But Well, okay. she was invited in, so. Yeah. She's she still comes. Here to it's, stay. It's a bad vibe lady who tends to my son. She mm. just has bad vibes. And then I also have a ghost in my apartment who, like, plays with my kids, and it's very weird. Yeah. Um uh, what was I about to say? You made me lose my train of thought. I'm sorry. Um, I just right rewind the YouTube. <laughs> something <laughs> rewind the YouTube. <laughs> something about um, abandoning things and cultures and religions yeah. and still believing oh, those things. Yeah. Yeah. So I was gonna say, like, I was forced to go to church every Sunday without fail. I was baptized. I was in youth group. I was in everything that the church does. I was involved Same. in, it. and yet. When someone was pregnant, my mom would put a wedding ring on a string and dip it oh, in Oh, yeah. Water and let it spin so that mm-hmm. they could find out the gender of the child. Yeah. You know, when her half-sister was pregnant, she was bathed in, like, these herbs. And the baby was premature. And they put, like, these herbs in the baby's hair. And you know what I mean? Like, all mm-hmm. these things that get held onto and passed down. So seeing my point, like, so wild diversion but my point was seeing these old ladies doing these things but with the materials they have on hand in south florida which is penguin candles instead of like some type of black candles and italian blend instead of like whatever herbs and like even the four earths you know she just got like some different colored dirt because yeah who's going out like i'm 86 years old i'm not going to four corners of the world to get four earths yeah here's here's some dirt from my garden here's some sand (laughs) you know (laughs) here's some Mm -hmm. clay (laughs) yeah peter i had the same thing when i moved into my apartment um like before I brought the cat here and I think I was here a few days and just like at night, I just feel like a little animal had walked in, not like a person. It was like a little animal spirit just came into my room and I was just like, Oh, hmm. 
I think it's time to bring that cat over here. <laughs> but I still every once in a while I'll still feel it. Um so yeah, I like I like animals. I have spirits. an old woman spirit in my apartment. And she loves my as children. As long as she's friendly, yeah. As long as she's she friendly. She loves my children and they love her. And it's very creepy because there are times where I'll hear like, you know, when when my older son is at school and the baby's home, I'll hear him laughing hysterically. Like there was one night I thought they were playing and I'm like, they're supposed to be in bed. And he's laughing hysterically and playing with the blanket. And I go in there and like the old one was dead asleep. So I'm like, who are you playing with? And then I'm like, ah, shit, she's back. <laughs> <laughs> at least she's free. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. I think for me, what I did like about the old ladies is that they were also very, you know, maternal in a way that no mm -hmm. one would argue with them either. Mm -hmm. You know, in a way that all of our, like, grandmas and, like, mm -hmm. the elder women in our family, you know, you go yeah. over Matriarchy. and they just railroad you. Like, whatever you're saying, they're like, no, baby, this is what we're going to do, you know? And they yeah. just kind of... And by the way, eat all this food. Yes. Everything, yes. <laughs> right. Definitely eat this food. But, you know, they have their way of fixing things and they want to fix it for you. And y'all may not have the same idea of fixing things, but it's going to work out in the, it's going right. to work it's out like, in the end. Yes, They're grandma, I'm going to eat the turkey you made and I'm also going to let you anoint me with this olive oil you bought at yeah. Publix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been blessed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, it's anointing oil now. Yeah, I mm. loved... Um, how did it take you a while to figure out that Charlie and Spider were the same person? Originally? It did. It did. Um, yeah, it did. It did for a second. I can't remember when I realized. It. I think it was something about the mirror picture where mm -hmm. he was going back. They were going back and forth, and I was like, "Oh, wait, this is just like they ripped the troublesome out of him." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they ripped out his chaos spread, and was like, "All right, Nana, you can't come back here." Um, and when I realized that, it became all the more interesting. Mm. I, mean, I expected them to look alike. Mm. Although when I picture yeah. them, even though they, even though like Rosie even says like you guys don't look alike, and once people realize he's not Charlie, they don't think he looks like. In my mind, because they're not even the same height, but in my mind, they look identical. Except Spider is in better shape and dresses better, mm. yeah. and is all. Things that Charlie could have been if he had exactly. followed a different path. Yeah. That's definitely also how I see it. That sort of spider is like that exaltation. Like everything that he had wanted to be, had hoped to be, you know, even at work. Like the things that, you know, he wished, like how he wished people would receive him <laughs> is what, mm -hmm. you know, spider was. And I think I, I took it as a joke. I was like, it would really be funny if they were the same. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't i don't like that because you know neil, uh, neil can't help himself mr gayman he can't help himself i love him <laughs> i love his voice so much and, I, and when i say his voice it's just like everything that you like you know that you're reading neil gayman when you're reading neil gayman yeah like that's the kind of identity yeah. i aspire to as a writer like you know that it's me one of my favorite parts of the story is when charlie does finally go to that like spirit god world oh i love that place mm -hmm. and everyone is pissed off at anansi <laughs> so no one wants to help him especially yeah. tiger yeah. especially and nobody wants to help aj him until he finally gets this bird woman which i meant to look up what goddess that is and i forgot to do it i'm just gonna start googling mm -hmm. um she's scary she was terrifying and I'm already kind of afraid of birds. And I was going to say, I was like, I can, she makes me understand why people would be afraid of birds. Really? I didn't yeah. find her scary. I found her like really like alluring. Really? Yeah. Mm. So oh, that's why I'm like, it's so me. fascinating. Yeah. Cause for me, it's just like, she's someone who I'm not really sure what her motive is, mm -hmm. but also like, I don't know to see that like, you know what it is when he's in jail and he walks outside and all of those birds mm -hmm. are sitting there and even like even the officers like oh shit no come inside <laughs> yeah I love that it was like it wasn't something that was in his head that other people could see it too that I thought was yeah. um, was really clutch when she said that she wanted Anansi's bloodline I thought he was so stupid for being like well they did say to make a trade so okay yeah. Very, uh, yeah, I thought he was going to be smarter through. than that 
I thought he was going to be smarter than that too, but he was very desperate to get rid of Spider, I guess, at that point. Um, there's so many things that reading it and listening to it, I visualize and I cannot wait for it to be a show. Like I really hope that they're able to follow through and really create a show because the moment when Spider decides to confess to Rosie what he's been up to mm-hmm. and she's acting weird and then suddenly her mouth opens and it opens too wide and then birds just start coming out mm-hmm. like I would mm-hmm. love I want to see that so bad because the way it yeah. looks in my mind is so cool there's so many things I want to see and so many things I just don't like, yeah, I don't so know I don't how we're going to deal with the arachnophobia I was going to say yeah I have Nick and I both have arachnophobia I don't know how I'm going to deal with the spiders all showing up to help spider exactly I just... <laughs> like that scene was so <laughs> wild especially since the whole thing was like yeah give me my tongue back you know like yeah. the, the situation is so ridiculous but I mean at least they came through I love that she like, just casually worked tore his tongue out too she was just like Whoa. yeah yeah i'm gonna hold on to this thanks yeah i mean she had to because he'll just say something and make it so Mm -hmm. that was actually one of the things i loved about um anansi in this story is like whatever he says it just becomes that so fat charlie is fat charlie even though he's not fat and they talk about that like award-winning dog and one day he's like that's a goofy dog and now this dog doesn't win awards anymore and everyone's just like wow that is a goofy dog yeah I loved that. I love that. We should Anansi, change that, AK. I love that um, Anansi also wears lemon yellow gloves. Yeah. In this story. Yeah. Because what an absurd thing to wear. But I'm sure he, he could pull it off. That's the thing. He's like, who else but me? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like Magneto and X-Men 97. Like, who else but oh, me is going to give you... It's going to give you yeah. the, bust, the, the middle part bust they down with a cape. <laughs> With a cape. With the cape. M on my chest. Yeah, like who's who's giving it to you like me? Nobody. So I gotta I gotta do it for you. And that's I feel like that's also like Anansi's like attitude. Like you know what? Everyone hates me because I'm that guy. So yeah. he's yeah. he's not thinking. Oh, I've literally screwed everyone over for my entire life, and I think everything is funny. He was like, no, the reason why they hate me is because I'm really that guy. Like. I'm yeah. cool, I'm pretty, and I'm smart, and they hate me. And you're like, sir, it is not your gloves. You are <laughs> I picture I picture a Nancy in the story as like a dark skinned Cab Calloway. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. That's how I picture him. Mm-hmm. Even Mave is like, that. he's got the Cab Calloway mustache. Yes, they mm-hmm. do mention his thin mustache. Yeah. I pictured him with that soft hair kind of slicked back. Mm-hmm. And you know, you cannot that, like, trust somebody who brushes their hair. Him. Yeah, yeah, he just always has that fine tooth comb on him and he's just like... <laughs> you know, you can't trust somebody who brushes their hair straight back, but Anansi definitely yeah. brushes his hair straight back. <laughs> so he can put his fedora on. What did you think of like how things kind of like ended up for Tiger? Because I feel like he had a a, a hard, tough hand, man. Tiger got it bad. Tiger got it bad. He never gets the upper hand with Anansi. The yeah, stories were his. He never yeah. gets them back. At this point, Tiger thinks it's finally his comeuppance. And instead he gets stuck with rodent gram coats. Mm-hmm. to annoy I love that him part. for all eternity it was like tiger and minion stuck in a cage it's like if scar got stuck in like trapped in the cage with like <laughs> with that bird the uh, yeah. got a lovely bunch omg of yes <laughs> yes 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 or like the two minions from hercules like that's what they were yeah. yeah yeah Ugh. i love when they do the battle of the of the cliches like both spider <laughs> <laughs> Both Spider yeah. and and Graham and Graham Coates. and um and Fat Charlie and Graham Coates. I was like, how many can they bandy back and forth with each other? I, I think it's like thing Maeve that... Livingston. Maeve, yes, I I loved Maeve. Um, the scene where he kills Maeve, I thought was really brutal. Yeah, I did not appreciate I, that. I didn't. I was really that. surprised by the brutality of it. I just like didn't really see it coming. Me neither. You know, like I knew he was going to do something terrible. Yeah, but I, I absolutely did not call beating her to death with a hammer. No, I thought yeah, he was just going to push her behind the thing and lock and like close the door. Right. Like, yeah. Like, uh, but I feel like the callous nature of it, like not just like when he's doing it, like how flippant he is about like doing it, but just like 
you know, then he just like stashes her body and he's like, I, I guess I'm what? moving faster, yeah. moving earlier than I planned. Yeah. And I'm like, you're insane. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I like the what? part at the end where he's got the gun and he's just like, he, Graham Coates thought to himself how like how so, uh, how many perfect cliches there were for men with guns, you know. It was like, oh, he didn't have to make anything up. He just like picked the lines out of out of the ear. <laughs> but it shows you he didn't really have it in him to be a killer because he didn't kill Rosie and her mother right away. No, like so he has done it, and he was hoping yeah. to get the chance to do it again, but he couldn't follow through when he got the chance. Maybe it's different when there's two people. Yeah, maybe a gun is too easy. That Maybe he too. was because in the when he's killing uh Maeve, he's he wishes he had a gun mm -hmm. because it would have been yeah. cleaner and easier. But then when he does have a gun, he doesn't follow through. So either he's not as tough as he thought, or he was hoping to be more brutal. Or I feel like he just kind of gets off on the fact that he's got hostages. You know, there's that too. Yeah. I think he's just yeah. like, ooh, they're in my <laughs> there they are in my wine cellar locked up. Nobody's ever gonna know. I liked how the um, magical god world and the real world kind of intersected when they were trapped mm. in that cellar. Mm -hmm. So they feel tiger prowling. The veil is but thin. tigers also, yeah, the veil is very thin in there. And, and there's not really an explanation why, which is fine. Um, but I enjoyed it where tiger thinks he can sense Rosie. Rosie thinks... Of Rosie's mother can absolutely sense that there's a big cat in that room that Rosie doesn't seem to be aware of at all mm -hmm. and Tiger's kind of in both places at once so I liked how the worlds were kind of collapsing into each other a little bit yeah yeah <sighs> yeah I like that I mean, as well I mean this is my first time reading reading this book and like I, I'm gonna I've I, I, something I'll absolutely read again. Um, and now that I've listened to the audio, like, it's just funny. It's mm -hmm. funny. Like, there's just like, and it's not like some things made me like laugh out loud, but just like throughout the whole thing, I'm just giggling a little bit because I'm like, ah, oh, you clever fucker. Look at what you did there. Uh, <laughs> there's so much, like so much personality. And everybody feels very, very real. Um, it was exceptional. I did love that Rosie's mother did not believe he was fat Charlie. Like, she's like, I'll accept that you're saying it, but I don't actually believe you. Yeah. She's such a yeah. suspicious woman. And she was right all along. <laughs> it's crazy that she doesn't believe his fat Charlie and she can see the tiger, um, whereas Rosie was mm -hmm. duped by both of those things. Mm -hmm. I think a recurring theme for me um, between Charlie and Spider, especially early in the book where they're kind of, you know, excuse me switching back and forth is how doing the right thing only matters if you do it at the right time mm -hmm. because you know spider spider kind of went into the office and messed things up technically he was kind of doing the right thing yeah by exposing the whole situation but now you've you know what i mean now you're making it tough for everyone so because you did that one thing even mm -hmm. though even though you wasn't wrong man's was stealing he mm -hmm. was untoward you are correct mm -hmm. but because of how you did it you're you know openly in front of everyone now he feels threatened it kicks off all of these like little things like even with um even with the girlfriend it's like technically okay like if you like her and you feel like your brother is not really giving her any vim and you wanted to you know show her a good time you know really show her like hey baby like the streets could love you too you could have <laughs> just, just done that you know what i mean would it have been okay but you're doing the right thing in the wrong way at the mm -hmm. wrong time and the Always. way he justifies it too because yes. in some ways he's kind of right if rosie had showed up for lunch and charlie didn't show up she'd have questions and here's charlie with this strange woman in his house because she spent the night and he was out all night drinking and you know women wine and song um 
So he was kind of right. If you didn't show up to lunch with Rosie, she would have been suspicious. So I kind of mm-hmm. saved your ass there. Well, now Rosie's leaning in to kiss you. Well, if you don't, she's going to have questions and she's, right. you know, she's going to want to know what's going on. So of course I have to make out with her because otherwise right. it's going to raise gonna questions. It's going to blow up the spot. Yeah. Right. Like her <laughs> kisses on the cheeks for spider. <laughs> right. No kisses on the cheeks for spider. So spider is just, I, who, okay. Who would you fan Uh-oh. cast the spider? Uh-oh. I knew this was coming. Who would you fan cast the spider? That's tough. Because I can't... I know this is weird. I have a hard time with fan casting because I truly cannot necessarily see someone until they really, like, embody it and play it. Like, mm-hmm. okay, so, like, when Orlando Jones got cast, right? Mm-hmm. I was automatically like, yeah, I could see it. I can absolutely see it. But I probably never would have thought... I never would have. Yeah. No, have, let's throw this to the chat because yeah. I feel like AK is a fan caster. All right, AK, who would you fan yes, cast? Okay. I'm like, I can't think of someone who, cause it would have to be somebody who's both like very handsome, but also a little bit goofy. Yes. Yeah. Has the ability to kind of come across a little bit, you know, fumbly and mumbly. You know, mm-hmm. a little bit unsure, but also able to switch into that. I guess that Just Urkel like, versus Stefan kind of. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Kind of exactly. It's a really good but, example. Yeah. Yeah. It's like every time I see a spider, he's just like the way that he's just like kind of lounging like this, you know, like, you know how in Good Omens, um, uh, what's the snake guy? Shit. Oh, my God. I can't remember his name. The demon. You know how it's just like the way that he walks and the way that he sits and the way his body language yeah. expresses it. He's oh, uh, yeah. from oh, Good Omens. Um, yeah. I don't want to call oh, what's snake. his name? He played the doctor. Oh, God, snake. Yeah, my my brain it's is a blanking. Crowley. <laughs> Crowley, Crowley, Crowley. Yeah, the guy who plays Crowley. I don't know why his, he's extremely Crowley. famous. His name should definitely be David Tennant. David yeah. Tennant, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, so somebody who can just like be embody and become a character like that, but I don't know who I would cast for Spider. That's I mean, yeah, because it'd have to be debonair, debonair, and just like very easy, but definitely able to like access God and Goof at the same time. Yeah, hmm. it have to be someone new. I feel like that's such a a star maker of a role. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, I couldn't picture Lakeith. For Spider, so because cool. I I think he could get like the silliness and that mm. surreal magical side, but like the debonair, just I like wooing everyone. Things yeah, I think that he could pull off the debonair. Yeah, yeah, because he does look good in a suit. I feel like he'd be able to. That's actually a very good, um, a very good choice. My my first thought, like I pictured Aldous Hodge, but I can't picture him being goofy. <sighs> That yeah, he would nail the the debonair, but not the goofy. Yeah, this guy's name being silly at mm-hmm. all. Uh, hold on. I mean, I guess since we're we're all on the British actors, um, what about um, John Boyega, or is he too big now to to play a role him? like that? I could see him as Fat Charlie. Yes, I feel like he would nail like the. I feel like he would nail some of like the in-betweens too of sort of coming to your identity. Yeah. But I, I have McLaughlin. not watched How old is of Caleb McLaughlin? I feel like he might be too young, no? Yeah, he might be a little bit too young, but hey, you know, Neil will take 10 years to settle in on a, on a TV project. That's so true. That's fine. That is very true. We got true. time. What's his name? Is yeah, he's only right, 22. Diamond. I feel like he'd be too young for Spider for yeah. Spider right now. Yeah, give like, him another like five, ten years. I feel yeah. a younger person, uh, like an older person. Um, Jesus Christ, um, is it Jaiman Hunsu? Oh yeah, I could see if he was younger, I could see him being like a spider. If he was younger, yeah, he's too old now. Who would you cast as this version of a Nancy? It'd have to be somebody kind of old. I picture him short too. Oh yeah, very short. Yeah. Very short. Well, because it said when they were dancing with that tourist, his like head came up to her her chest. <laughs> chest I love, head. I love like hearing about him going to do karaoke. 
like just regular doing karaoke, how he occasionally plays the lottery and only wins enough to just like mm-hmm. cover yeah, his expenses yeah. and his fun and not to bring any attention really. You know, he spends all his time fishing. I loved when um Charlie's mother is in the hospital and they're telling him, you know, this is the end. She doesn't have much time and she wants a Nancy to come say goodbye. And he comes and says goodbye and he gives her like another six months. Because mm-hmm. she's just yeah. so happy. Mm-hmm. He shows up with a band and you know, Charlie's so embarrassed. Um there, yeah, I, I loved all of the Anansi scenes, even though we never get Anansi. Well, we do get Anansi's perspective when he meets Maeve in the afterlife. Because right. he was in his grave bored and decided he wanted to go dancing. Mm. Um, what about Jay Ellis from Insecure? I'm like scrolling through actors now. As who? Um, as Anansi. Mm. Oh, he's too young. He yeah, too young? I feel like, see, no, I would switch. I would say Boyega would be better for like Anansi. Or like someone like a, a Cuba Gooding that nails just being an unserious person. Yeah. You're so unserious, but you take yourself seriously. So you, need, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Oliver Samuels. <laughs> Oliver. I love Oliver. I grew up watching Oliver's skits and I could absolutely see him playing a Nancy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could kind of see that too, yeah. You're looking at him. You should watch some of his videos. Nikki, you know, it's so you funny. I'm like looking at his thing. No, I have it. I'll definitely check them out. You know, when you have like on Wikipedia, it's like born children and it like names your children. Mm-hmm. Under his, it just says has six children. <laughs> <laughs> I love the privacy. <laughs> and he's 75. That's about the right age. It'd have to happen yeah. now. Yeah, we can't, we can't give it fifteen more years. No, Neil. no. Although you know what they do with these AIs and these characters, because I, I watched them. Um, I saw the TV glow, and mm. what is the actor's name? Hold on, because he was in the other thing that I can't fucking remember. All right, hold on. I'm gonna show this picture of Oliver real quick because it's like all the way, a Nancy. Oh, Justice um, something. What's his name? Justice Smith. Because they like aged him up and down, and, and I was just like, oh. But it's possible. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Is this it? Share screen. Is that not a Nancy? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Just give him a a, yellow lemon gloves on him. And a lime green fedora. Yeah. Because he's very unserious. Very. Very unserious. Absolutely. And I have not seen him in so long. Like looking at this picture, I'm like, I follow him on Instagram. So I see him all the time. I'm going to have to go (laughs) find him on Instagram now. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah. Oliver Samuels comes to mind for. Oh, uh, they put your boo up there. Who? Uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Oh, you know I love him. I haven't really seen him play like anything lighter. Would he be able to capture the lightness, like the very like I'm, I'm so ridiculous, but I don't see it side of Anansi. Hmm. I wonder. But it would be really cool to see that because I know he's such a good actor. Yeah, to get into those roles, yeah. Yeah, he's such a good actor that I could. But yeah, I don't know. Now, now I'm stuck on Oliver because mm. he's. If you yeah, ever watch his, it's like so so goofy and over mm. the top, just ridiculous person. And at no point do we see um, Anansi being like really debonair. He's just charming. Everyone finds him so charming. Mm. Whereas yeah. Spider, I feel like, comes across as like just sexy in your dress. No, he walks into the room and everybody looks. Yeah. Yeah. Has that commanding, you know, mm-hmm. presence and energy. Yeah. The type of person who makes you feel like you're the only one in the room when they're talking to you. He's got like that mm-hmm. thing. Even though he's talking to six women at the same time. <laughs> mm-hmm. that, that's why he could do that because he's making each and every single one of them feel the same way. So it's like you got it's pretty much saying and he's Jamaican in his future. Yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's 
he'll treat you like a the queen. You and his five <laughs> other girlfriends mm -hmm. and his two wives. You'll all yeah. be treated like you're the only one. You know, spider has eight legs, you know. I mean, yeah. look, see? <laughs> <laughs> Boom. All right. Well, loved it. It's three o'clock. I love it. It's three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I loved it. Uh, I mean, normally I would chill, but the Knicks are playing and it's game. Oh, yeah. So. Listen, they've, um, knock on wood, you know, my babies, mm -hmm. they've been, they've been passing the ball. They've been, they've been putting it in the hole. So I'm happy. That's all yeah. we need them to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, excited for well, this game. Before we go, final thoughts on Anansi boys? Um, high reread value would re re would absolutely read again. Um, I would love to see it come to the screen, but it's also something I'd be super patient for. Mm -hmm. um and i mean i feel like nothing is going to interrupt my love for neil gaiman just like how i feel about brandon sanderson there you go ak and um <laughs> yeah it's just it's just so much fun like i, I any world he does i want to be a part of it um and i i really appreciate the fact that he did tell an anansi story and he is not afraid to take on these perspectives and try it and then also do them justice yeah yeah this guy, oh. the guy who played Pat O'Kane, I could see him as an Anansi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even though we've seen him play like a villain, mm -hmm. I could, I don't know, I could picture him being silly. But you enough. know what? When, every time I smile he has. Yeah. Every time I see him, like with as Pat and Fane, sometimes I have a hard time taking him seriously because of like the complete dork he was in Love Actually. He's like a porn director, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and so I, like I could see like that, that spectrum. Final thoughts, Anastasia? um yeah neil what a guy uh i don't like lots of lots of guys um especially ones so it's very you know it's very refreshing to have one that i i have liked for years and has not disappointed me yet um very much looking forward to you know the new worlds i see he has a like a new comic out Mm -hmm. um i have to you know check that out because he's always he always has a world that i'm interested in yeah. So yeah, another great read from him. Yeah. I think that um Anansi Boys is like top 10 books I've ever read for me. Like it's like as far as my favorites, like it's it's up there. And if it if and when it gets adapted, I just hope they do a really good job with it and I hope that it's cast well. I hope that they go to the Caribbean and England and find yes, good people. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it would need to be cast with unknowns. Yeah. So that yeah. you're not distracted by mm -hmm. whatever star is in it. And also I feel like when there's a star involved, they tend to like write for that star instead of like yep. creating, yeah. li bringing life to the story itself. Like I would take a star as a cameo as a minor character. Yeah. Yeah, something to get yeah. you funding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, hold on a second. Peter's asking a question. Oh. Uh, so he... uh, in the American Gods, no, he's alive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's alive. Um, real quick, I just want to say about um, 100 oh, no, Years of cousin. Solitudes. Yep. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Happens uh, every time. About 100 Years of Solitude, like Gabriel mm -hmm. Garcia Marquez is one of my mm -hmm. favorite authors of all time. Yeah. And um, yeah, I remember the first time I started to read 100 Years of Solitude, I was like, whew, okay. And then I came back a couple years later and I was able to finish it. I got my dad to read it. And it was just, the thing about that book is that world is so rich. And actually, since they're doing the TV adaptation, they're like hoping to bring a bunch of people, like attract tourism to Aratakata. Yeah. Forgot, right? Um, like, what Macondo IRL um but I think the thing that was hard about that book is that you're following the family through through so many generations and everybody's got the same, the same name, name. <laughs> it's the same That's name very yeah my, oh my, my experience was absolutely the same in that it took me a very long time to get into it because I was like which one and that was my again? first Marquez so I really wasn't really mm, hit that's a to tough the games that to he would into. play and I didn't even think in my youth, hey, sensible girl, try another one of his books so you understand the way that he does things. No, I was like, nah, yeah. I'm going to get through it eventually. Yeah. And the same thing, I one summer I was determined to get through it. I had my notebook. I wrote my notes. You know, I kept up. <laughs> and 
I bawled like a baby when can you still I finished that last week. We can yeah, still hear, can still you, hear yeah. you. Okay, I'm going to just refresh really quickly. I was going to say, so I'm gonna yeah, disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Right, go ahead. Keep going. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I tried that really hard. I think there was, I read a short story of his. And then when I couldn't get through 100 Years of Solitude, or just like, I've just put it down and I walked away because I was just, it was too much. There was too much confusion in my regular life to like pers- pers- persist. Um, but then I re- read Love in the Time of Cholera and I was oh, like, oh, yeah. nope. That's what I have two copies on my bookshelf. And I might get it. Yeah, because yeah. like that's my fave. Um, but then like no one writes to the colonel and chronicles oh. of a death foretold and like or the general, sorry. Yeah. Um, and of love and other demons, like, oh, it's just the world is so rich. So yeah, I'm glad we brought him up. I want to do a book of his um for for this stream. We just don't know yet. I think 100 years of solitudes might might be a bit of a big commitment. Mm. Um because if we're yeah, going to do no, that, we're yeah, going to do a Brandon Sanderson book first. Yeah, that's that's going to be t- if we do 100 Years yeah. of Solitude, we're going to be Charlie at the whiteboard <laughs> making connections. Yeah, so, yeah. That's so I feel need something that's a little bit easy. Love in the time of cholera, though, the, is that's the first. Uh, that's the first one and, I read from. Yeah, yeah uh, I, but I think Marquez. But I think Chronicles of a Death Foretold is a really good easy one. It is. I haven't read yeah. that. Also. Yeah, um, read that one. Yeah. Also, memories of my uh, melancholy horrors. I mm. think is really um, accessible, and it gives you a lot of different, you know, kinds of uh, topic of review. Yeah. And Me, I think it gives I love. You I stand. I love. I love. 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 Love him. I do. Yeah. I really do. Same. 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 He's same. he's on that same level as uh, Neil for me. Yeah, because I also love magical realism. Mm-hmm. So my magical realism big three for the men's are the two of them, and then Murakami. Ooh. Even though he does not write women well, and he clearly has some patriarchal issues that we know are not getting resolved, mm. he he writes a good a good damn good story. Yeah. Another two more questions before we go. Are you yep. reading anything interesting right now? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Why was? Because <laughs> yes, always. And now I have to like yeah. look in my. I have to consult my Goodreads. So I can listen. Tell you. I just put. You see, I just pull up my my library. <laughs> um, and just just to say, um, I don't know if you guys are messing with Jefferton right now from Amazon. I call him Jefferton. I call him whatever I feel like calling him. Um. <laughs> But there's currently a book sale going on, so <clears throat> till tomorrow. Uh, yeah, yes. I told I Tanya. I told Tanya, and I quote, "She she responded to me, don't tempt me, witch.'" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm, yeah. "I'm here to tempt you. That's uh, one thing. Both of you witches bringing that, temptation tempt into my you. life." Um, I'm currently reading Lilith which Mm. follows Lilith of the Bible as she works her way through history, trying to bring light to the goddess Asherah and has to deal with uh, God's wrath and how disappointed she is in mankind and with the subjugation of women. And I'm also reading a book called Dominoes. That's about a woman dominoes. Yeah. Yeah, she's a woman who is about to get married and find out that finds out that her fiance's husband used to own her ancestors. Yeah. And she's grappling with that right before their wedding. So those are the two that I'm and obviously I'm listening to Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson because the mm. fifth book for Stormlight Archive comes out this December, so I've been yep. catching up Can't with my wait. reread for that. So that's Back what I'm reading. Don't, don't stone me. Power. I've never I've never read a Sanderson. You know what? Start with Mistborn. Oh, you know what? Or Warbreaker. Or, Warbreaker? Or, or okay. Elantris. Start with Elantris. Yeah, start Elantris. with Elantris. Yeah. That'll be a good introduction to like the universe because the way the way of kings, while amazing, you know, we stand we're Standersons. It's um, part of a big epic. It, yeah. Ah. Yeah. And, but I like um, that. It, I like all hard. stories written in the same world. So. All right. Well, he's got all his stuff in the same universe, so definitely check him out. Um and his I was gonna go to the convention, but it sold out in two hours. One oh, hour wow. in one hour, like Ooh. that sold out in one hour. Love is real. That's how I know it's good. So I'm just yeah. gonna go ahead and mosey this onto my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, what well, I'm reading is Daylight Come. Um, that I think you guys would like. It's also it's like a dystopian uh, book about like, hey, what if the sun was too hot um, in Jamaica? Like, you know, what would you do? Like, add it. 
Yeah. I'm um, working on Libby right now. Yeah. Listen, yeah, that. Um, and I also Viola got uh, Viola Davis's Finding Me in the book sale. So I'm going yeah. to um, read that one as well. And I'll be honest, I have like five books in rotation. Like I'm, I'm always <laughs> yeah, reading too many yeah. things. So I also have a uh, decolonial like Marxism that I'm going through because I haven't gone through that in my adult years. And um, the Flowers of Buffoonery, which I'm really enjoying. Mm -hmm. uh, a shorter book, um, but I love it. I love it so far. I'm only like in chapter four and I think it's only like 10 chapters. Mm, okay. okay. Add it to my list too. Hi, I just so. saw Daylight come pop up on your Goodreads. Uh, <laughs> fast i gotta update um, my man i'm so bad at updating it i let's see i'm currently reading um one of them is the mistress of spices and it's about yes. this yeah have you read it yes i oh, love that book i'm so excited i got it at a bookstore uh when last time tanya and i played D, D. so i'm reading that i'm reading fire B blood by jeff wheeler um we did one of his books for a different book club we did a uh, storm glass and that's all stuff that happens within the same universe Ooh. and then i've got a couple short story things going on um because i'm also kind of listening to yeah <laughs> i actually i have i got uh the black girl survives in this one and mm -hmm. i got out there screaming which are both horror story anthologies Ooh. and i also got an anthology that just came out last month called uh weird black girls but i haven't started reading it yet mm -hmm. but those are those are the next ones in my tbr my next like short yeah. stories collections the TBR. other one i'm reading is one i mentioned before the ava ava may one, the fantastically twisted like mm. basically like let's let's do these fairy tales let's make them modern and make them just terrifying like the fables used to I be like that yeah, yeah. I highly recommend uh, we don't have a 30 tuesday scheduled for june <sighs> so we need to work on that <laughs> hold we on let me let to... me consult the list let's just we'll throw it to the okay you all get to pick um, <laughs> we also don't have a book club pick for july um mm -hmm. so we're behind on that well you know we got a lot of shit going um, on. what else do we have coming up we have D, D again june yep. 2nd we're playing D D at uh 2 p.m this time right mm -hmm. at 2 p.m yeah. yeah i believe so no at noon at 12 that one is at 12 noon yeah so we're playing D D at dungeons it's dungeons and draft house i'll drop the link because mm -hmm. we've been playing for the last few months with this doing how one shot how did i miss that i gotta tune in for that well we go in person for this one yeah oh, that's so but cool. we've been thinking about doing because we're both pretty new to it i started playing last year nikki just started playing this year mm -hmm. um and we found these this uh dungeons and draft house at the alamo draft house theaters Mm -hmm. once a month yeah. they have they hold it it's um it's hosted by dungeon in a box and so they do like a one shot D, &D for like four hours and it's really That's really awesome. fun yeah it's really fun you know you you just do the one shot adventure and the, you know the people have all been really nice so we're doing that june 2nd that's at noon we're table four as always because bridge four reference Brenda Sanderson, go ahead, AKA add that to the big, check that off on your bingo card. Um, <laughs> that's June 2nd at noon. Um, okay. What else do we have? Um, I think that's it. I mean, well, no, that's not true because house of the dragon is coming back. So house of the yeah. dragon we'll is coming back, back. So every we'll week weekly. And, yeah. And when, uh, it's Oh, I know what our next 30 Tuesday is X-Men 97. Oh, is that mm -hmm. what we're doing next? Yes. Okay. Uh, Anastasia, would you want to join us for that? Oh It'll yeah, be I'll a listen. Tuesday night at nine, we'll just pick one. I'm with it. Yeah, you just you just shoot me that calendar invite. All um, right. I'm down. Yeah, like I'm I said, the writing. Oh my god! And I haven't. Don't finished spoil because I haven't finished. I I've only seen yeah, like no, three I haven't episodes. finished. I Same. I I'm gonna. I'm about to binge everything this weekend. Well, it's gonna be today. I'm gonna binge everything to catch up, and I cannot wait because I know I'm gonna be devastated in the best possible way. Mm. Lewis uh, was interested in joining us, Nikki. So I'll check his yeah. calendar too to find yeah, out a good see. Tuesday for him. Um, can we um, do? Um, well, let's ask. We can ask the, our audience. Should we do Parable of the Sower? Since I have the hard copy now, we didn't do that. Oh no, we did no. Xenogenesis. But then I also think, like, because we've we've but 
I was just like, oh, what we've done her, but we just did two Neil Gaiman books, like, and we did, <laughs> yeah, all and we've three. done we did all five. Three. <laughs> we've done <laughs> five yeah. N.K. Jemison books. Exactly. <laughs> and right. This was basically started off as like an N- N.K. Jemison stand club. Yeah. Well, you they, know what? Like, should we do a ask you, you guys? Should we do a Brandon Sanderson book? Like Warbreaker. Like Warbreaker or Elantris or um, any of the the one shots. Let's do Elantris. Let's do Elantris. Okay. Since especially since Done. we just told Anastasia to read yeah. it. Yeah, let's do Elantris then. Yeah. Okay. So for the next one. Done. Mm. Okay. So all right. We so will I'm we're gonna work on a date shape. for July. we're gonna work on a date for June um thirty Tuesday. Yeah. Uh we have to consult people's schedules, but that'll be a Tuesday at nine, some point in June, maybe Jeez. like the eighteenth or twenty fifth, perhaps. Um for X Men ninety seven, and then mm-hmm. our July book club will be Elantris. We'll yep. pick a Sunday for that, and once we have dates, Nikki will make a flyer, and I'll post it, and I'll send you a calendar invite. Yes, please. So now there's pressure on you. Do you like? Oh, how no, you no pressure at all. I, I feel like the that. one thing that would motivate me to read is knowing that I get to talk about it with someone. I think so much of my reading is solitary, and I don't yeah. get to. You know, because again, I, I always have too many books in rotation. Yeah, <laughs> so I understand. The opportunity to talk about it is always one that I'm going to take. All right. So Lantris for July. Woo-hoo. I got my um, way friendly. I, do you love how we like pretended where this is a democracy and then we just <laughs> told everybody <laughs> what books we were reading anyway? <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah. it works in our world. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Big Leo energy. <laughs> pretend, so we, pretend we want your opinion, but we've already made up our minds. Oh, that's um, really it. You've seen the process at work. That's the process. <laughs> uh, I think I asked, but I forgot. Anastasia, do you have anything you want to promote? Uh, no, just, you know, journal. You know, okay. take out the journal and write in the journal. Nikki's very the, good about journaling. Yeah, yeah the journal is not mad at you. If if you miss a week, it, it the, the journal is not mad at you. It's okay. Pick it back up. Right. There's this article that just came out. Um, I guess like schools are finally reconsidering cursive because they're talking about how the act of handwriting is just so much better for learning. Oh, <gasps> okay. I took the okay. entire bar exam handwritten because there's no way that I can retain information if I yeah. type. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're it. like talking about people like typing notes and blah blah blah. Like, no, handwriting, handwriting. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I journal by hand. Um, I've got <laughs> notebooks and notebooks and notebooks from I don't know. I don't know yeah, what happened to my right. old old ones, but these go back to 2016. All right. Well, I guess that's it then for us. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining and chatting thank you for with having us. Me. And I'm looking forward to talking to X-Men 97 with yeah. you next. And I have like probably <laughs> in like three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, that means so, I need to watch it. Yeah. 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 I right, have not, right. I didn't text with Lewis about the finale yet, but we've been no texting worries. about it, so. <laughs> Wait, so um, it's it's in June? I'm gonna, yeah, June. I'm gonna find out what Yeah, Tuesday that'll be after the him. NBA finals. Okay. I'll have yeah. more space in my life. Yeah, he's, I think he's the busiest out of us, so. Yeah. I'll find out what Tuesday yeah. he's, uh, works for him. Um, also, we may bring trivia back to Brooklyn, so Ooh. keep your eyes and ears open for trivia. Yeah that's it my child is now asking telling me that food is yummy so i guess that's a hint that he wants to yes eat. yeah so thanks Go again ahead, <laughs> Thank you, don't ladies. go anywhere anastasia don't hang yes. up i'm gonna end the stream bye, bye guys, guys. Bye. bye to find previous episodes go to thousand eyes podcast.com you can also find us on youtube a thousand eyes in one podcast and if you'd like to follow us on social media we're on twitter as thousand eyes one facebook and instagram a thousand eyes in one if you're interested in our speculative fiction book club that is wine on an empty stomach on instagram